Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's uh, Midweek Wednesday and what a show I have planned for you today. I'm really excited about today's show. I, I don't often get too excited, but today and Friday's show are real big for me. Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, a winter show that I attended in Jacktown or Bangor, Pennsylvania. Uh, for those of you new to the channel or just tuning in, we... Um, have steam engine tractor shows things like that that we attend and um they also have flea markets and whatnot at these shows and this is where people like me who restore tools or enjoy tools or engines or old things just this is where we thrive ever since i was a kid my favorite thing in life was going to these shows if i was into model railroading i would love to go to the railroad shows and you know, um, RC shows for radio control or boat shows for any kind of hobby I was into. The shows is, is what really you live for. And um, these winter, these uh, Jacktown shows, they have four times a year, uh, are just my favorite shows of all. And the winter show is normally because it's winter time, it's not so heavily attended and they don't have as many vendors, but um, there's always, I always find the best deals at the winter show. And that's because there aren't so many people there snatching up all the good deals. And it, it's just a great show to attend. So I have six minutes of film footage of, uh, of great, just uh, great stuff for sale. Let's check that out right away. Then I'll show you what I picked up. So keep an eye out. What do you think I was going to buy as you're looking at this? Okay, here we are. 715. They got the fire started already. Look at that, huh? That's nice. When you got to warm up, you head over there and let's go see what's going on and who's here early. Now it's not even sunrise yet. And look, these are all the early birds. Again, this isn't the biggest show, but I always get such good deals here in the winter time. So let's go see what's going on. Okay, check this out. Can you feel the heat from here? Because I'm telling you, it's warm. And this is where you come if it gets cold, you want to warm up. They also give it free hot dogs, free hot chocolate. Look, look, they're warming up. Free hot chocolate, free uh, marshmallows, and they give you big long sticks because you can't get close. But this will this will get down to colds in a little while. But this is where you come to warm up. And uh, so far things look nice. So far there's a lot of good buys. Let's go check some out. Right under the bench. They're Home Depot. Friend of there, they get, they close, close. I got it better than it was. I have no patience today. You just saw my level of patience. So, what'd you beat me to? Stuff that big. <laughs> you know what it is, though.
What the? What? And, and he's never touched the court. That's crazy. Yeah, with the storage thing. That's the storage thing. Or anything no, over this no. section. He's not here, so I'm not responsible for anything. Now, as you can see, there were some absolutely fantastic deals there. I mean, really good deals. To, um, I don't even want to. I, I tried to get the prices on some of those things, like those uh, tradle um, scroll saws. Those things are big money, and and you can. I'm telling you, they was there for a song and a dance, and and there were so many good deals. And let me show you. And the best part for me of the show is me is meeting up with some of the the friends that you have at the show. I met up with with uh, Mike and 805 Road King, we were having the time of our lives laughing and, and, and talking about things. And then you run into all other people there and, and, and Patrick the Enabler was there who, uh, whenever Patrick's around, um, <laughs> I'll tell you, he, you, you wind up buying things that you don't specifically need. Patrick pick, picked up that uh, post drill. You see that post drill that was there under the table? He got that for $10. I'm telling you, the buys were crazy. Let me show you what I got. And I said I'm done buying tools, but you got to see. Now, I started off on a good note, not going to buy any tools. But I go to my the first table of the first row I go there. I see this box there. I open it up, right? And I say, wow, look at this. And the guy goes, you like that? I go, wow, made in West Germany. It's got all the tools and all nice red. Of course, Scoutcrafter, I'm looking at this. It's got the nice ruler. This one's made in Germany. This one here, you can see, made in Germany, right? Uh, centimeters, as I said, uh, he goes, $2. That's what started me off. Now, if that wasn't bad enough, the same guy had this under his table, and he says, uh, oh, you like that? And it's one of them auto kits that come with, it, the only thing it was missing had a little compressor here, but it had the first aid kit, some tools, triangles, copper jumper cables, you know, flashing light, emergency light, uh, some tools, and uh, this was $5. So I was on a start for a good day. So that started me off on my downward spiral as far as buying tools I did buy. But I always buy tools when I buy at the show. It's, it's always, I think, something you would like to see restored or something I would enjoy restoring for the channel. Except for this one here. This is a pair of channel lock 426. Can you see these? And these are older ones. You could see, if, I don't know if you could see the date there, but that is, uh, it is 1953, January, that they were made. And uh, oh, these were just beautiful, beautiful shape. And I said, boy, somebody bought these years ago, kept them real nice. Um, and then I bought some other things that I just enjoy. You know, anytime I see these military cutters, you know, again, they're like $6. You can't pass stuff like this by. Uh, I thought this would be very enjoyable for you to see. This would be a great show uh, to do a restoration on. It's, it's a, an axe. It needs work. It's got a fiberglass handle and uh, probably a foreign axe, but it was really the really quality rubber handle. A lot of the rubber today is junk. This one here is a real nice. I mean, this would clean up nicely. Uh, I never seen this type of hammer before of all the hammers I have. You know, you ever seen one of these before? I don't even know who made it, but, you know, it looks like maybe a plum or something, but 
interesting hammer here thought you'd like to see that restored uh here beautiful pair of pliers with look at the scalloping it's usually they're cracked but these aren't these are a utica but uh again there's a bend in the bottom of these and that'll be interesting to fix these i think you'd enjoy that uh let's see this one here paid a lot of money for this eight dollars but cray tools would become expensive but i just want i said boy this would be a good challenge especially with these edges to try and get this to look good so that was one um beautiful circa 1950s craftsman die set and uh all complete and not cheap it was like uh 17 dollars for that but well worth it and um this one here this reminded me of my dad and of course patrick was with me so if, whenever he's around i usually say okay i'm gonna do it and uh this thing was hardly ever used just needs a good cleanup let me know if you'd like to see that done i thought a lot of you might enjoy that and then this one here this again i paid a lot of money for ten dollars for this wrench is a lot but this is a really sweet wrench with these compound curves pipe and look at the jaw on here it's got this like a pipe like a serrated jaw it's very interesting and uh it's not beat up too bad I, I think this would come out really nice so uh let me know of one of these which one of these you'd like to see restored in upcoming shows but uh today for today i want to do this cray tool because this one here is a uh, you know i like cray tools now, as you know i've done a, a lot of different cray tools and cray tools that include a hammer on one side you know and the more rare they are the more expensive they get uh but i just like them i always like the little, these little tools like that they do come in handy a lot of times so this one here you could tell it i could tell by the feel and the weight it's a good steel and i'll show you how you test for good steel So it has it's very it has a good hardness to it it's tempered well it's not bent or anything so what i'd like to do is clean it up and like i said these edges here are always hard to get but uh, i have a way we could do that with the edge of the uh, flap sander and uh we'll clean this up i don't see any name on it or anything so uh let's get to it and make this into something that would you'd like to have in your pocket Now, normally we would be finished at this point. We took out all the pitting and all the scratches, all the dings, the dents, and we reprofiled everything. But I had something different planned for this tool. Let's see what we can do. Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what this beat up crate tool looked like before we started. I'm gonna call this project done. Here's what I wanted here. I wanted to blue on the uh, flat surfaces here. You know, it's that's a, and the sides I kept polished along with the heads here it really looks like something that is old time you know for some reason it just looks very old something like starrett would have made or something i don't know i don't even know who made this particular one but there we go it's uh partly blued partly not blued so what do you think different i tried to get that flame blue effect in here by heating it up you know different colors like an iridescent Ah, something different. Okay, so in closing, you know, those little crowbar, pry bars, some of them could be such a challenge, you know, with all them compound angles and the damn steel is so hard. You go through discs and it's in time. It took like three hours to do this. I'm telling you, those things, every time I do one, I say, I'm not doing another one for months. And sure enough, you know, one comes along that I grab. I don't know. Anyway, I got that one done. Um, what you think about that Jacktown show? Anything in there you think you would like? Anything I picked up that you would like to see re restored? Just put in the comments. Want to say special thanks to everybody that showed up to say hello. A special thanks to my buddy Frank Black. He came with his uh, daughter and his mom. They had such a good time. I, I didn't recognize Frank from, from the last show because he was all dressed up, bundled up. You know, we all look so different. <laughs> 
when we're all bundled up compared to the summer shows. But uh, special thanks to Frank. He dropped it off some hardware. And um, I hope you have a great day. We'll see you again on Friday for a very special show. I hope you can tune in. Take care now. Bye-bye.